Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody, anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. I hope everybody is doing good, you guys. It is hotter than hot. Like, oh my gosh. I, I, y'all know I live in Florida. I'm used to it being hot. It's like sweating at Christmas time. For those of y'all that get to have a white Christmas with Santa and the snow and all that, no, it's not like that down here. It is blistering hot. But this year has been a totally different type of hot. So I hope y'all have had a good summer. I hope y'all got to get outside and, you know, stay out of the sun a little bit, but get your sun, all that good jazz. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Shiver case. And I have been down the rabbit hole with this, okay, all the way in. I I'm going to tell y'all the story that is out there heavily. Okay, a lot that's that's heavily out there. At the end of this video, I'm going to I'm going to give you guys some things to think about cuz everything may not be as it seems. There could be some twists and turns in this and I do think that when this case is all said and done, we might be surprised. So make sure you guys stay until the end. So let's just talk about Lindsay Shiver first. So Lindsay Shiver is 36 years old and is from Alabama. She graduated from Auburn, Alabama. I know a lot of y'all are fans out there and she graduated with a marketing degree. Now this is, this is another picture perfect social media family. I mean, y'all wait, wait till y'all see what they was doing at such a young age. Lindsay, again, who graduated from Auburn with her degree in marketing was also a cheerleader. She was also named Miss Houston County in 2005 and finished second in the National Peanut Festival pageant. In 2007, while Lindsay was going to college, this is where she met Robert Shiver. Now, Robert is now 38 years old, so he's just just a couple years older than Lindsay. And he was a football player at Auburn University. So, okay, you got the cheerleader, you've got the football player that meets at college. She's also a pageant winner. I mean, by all accounts, they look like the perfect couple. And it doesn't hurt that Robert, her new boyfriend, who she then later goes on to marry in 2010, his father is wealthy, and I'm talking about wealthy, wealthy. See, Robert is the son of Alan Shiver, who was for more than four decades the CEO of Flower Foods before stepping down in 2019. Flower Foods, the company, is worth $5 billion. Did you hear me? Not million, $5 billion, and he was the CEO of this company. Since 2009, after Robert's football career, he worked for Senior Life Insurance Company. And after the two got married in 2010, they moved to Thomasville, Georgia together. The beautiful couple went on to have three children together and moved into an eight thousand square foot mansion. The home is valued at over $2.5 million and it has seven bedrooms. The couple would fly a private jet and take their kids and they would go on trips skiing in places. And Robert's family actually owned a beautiful townhouse down in the Bahamas. And I mean, this townhome is worth $5.2 million. It's 31 square foot on a very exclusive part of the Bahamas, like an island that I want to say like JLo owns a whole home on that same island. And there's other like famous people that it's very exclusive to people that have lots of money. Again, $5.2 million uh, townhouse that is only 3,100 square foot. 
His family owned it, so they would take their private jet down there. They would go on different trips. They always had the most beautiful social media pictures. And Lindsay would post the most perfect quotes on her pictures. And from the outside looking in, at 36 and 38 years old, they had it going on. Every time Lindsay went to go put gas in her Cadillac Escalade, she didn't have to worry about if she had enough money to fill it up or not. You know what I mean? And although money doesn't buy happiness, and it definitely doesn't mean that you're internally successful, but it did make their friends and family believe that they were the picture-perfect couple as well. I mean, it wasn't just social media. Everyone that knew them thought that they were soulmates. However, behind closed doors, Lindsay and Robert's marriage was falling apart. Now, there is a lot of missing pieces in this story, and they hopefully are going to come out later. They may or they may not, and I'll tell you at the end what I think about all of that, but their marriage started to fall apart behind closed doors. And Robert allegedly went out and hired a private investigator to follow his wife to see what she was up to. Allegedly, and this is a good place for me to tell y'all, everything in this video is alleged. I have pulled all of my information from very public sources that are already out there. I'm just filtering it through my own opinion. Please go do your own research, form your own opinions. Just don't show hate to anybody anywhere. I don't know these people, I can't say for sure, but I'm just relaying what's already out there. Allegedly, when Robert hired this PI, this is where he was able to prove that his wife was having an affair. Now, originally, the guy that he believed that she was having an affair with was like some bartender or something from what we know. But later, he would find out that she was actually having an affair with this other guy that's down in the Bahamas where they would fly to regularly to this townhome that his family owned. So on April 5th of this year, 2023, Robert filed for divorce. In the divorce, he stated that the reason for the filing was for adulterous acts. Interestingly enough, Lindsay filed for divorce the very next day on April 6th, which tells me that they both probably already had the paperwork in the works. It just so happened that Robert turned his in first. Now, Robert requested joint, legal, and primary physical custody of their three children, along with possession of the marital residence, which was that $2.5 million, 8,000 square foot home that they own. He also wanted all of the furnishings that were in the home, as well as possession of his vehicle, and he wanted a restraining order to keep Lindsay from harassing him. However, Lindsay had a totally different view of their marriage and their problems according to her divorce paperwork. Lindsay claimed any extramarital relationship that she had during their marriage was actually during their separation and legally condoned by the husband. So she was stating like, listen, I didn't have an affair with him until we were already separated. It was a mutual understanding between the two of us. And he knew that I was seeing this guy down in the Bahamas at this point. But nevertheless, from her side of the story, she wanted to get a divorce because she said that he was emotionally, physically, and psychologically abusive to her. And it even stated in there that he had been that way in front of the children a few times. Lindsay also stated that because she was a stay-at-home mother for so long, that her employment opportunities outside of the home were very limited. Now, I want you guys to remember this part as well. Lindsay also stated that she wanted full custody of the kids and wanted to be able to stay in the home because of these factors. Of course, she wanted alimony and child support and part of the possessions, and that she did not feel safe inside the home with Robert because of the DV allegation. Lindsay also stated in this paperwork that her husband Robert was punishing her or was trying to punish her financially by cutting her off to all the funds. So see, she was a stay-at-home mom, and he was the one working and brought in the money. And so because of this, because of their separation and the whole situation, he wasn't letting her get to the money that she once could get to. There was even mention of a time where Lindsay alleged that Robert actually took the kids against her will or without her permission 
out of town and would not let her speak to her own children. And the only way that she could even get them back into town or find out where they were was when the police got involved. Lindsay's attorney also stated that Lindsay wanted to get a restraining order against Robert and said that the wife feels unsafe in the marital home and has installed locks on the interior doors of the home for protection. And just to throw this in here, allegedly Robert said that he should not have to pay her alimony. She has an education. She should be able to go out and get a job no problem and so there was some back and forth now this is back in april okay april of this year so remember that Lindsay and her husband robert were still living in this home together even after all of that that was stated in the divorce paperwork all the way up until july 16th of this year again they filed the paperwork back in april July 16th of this year, and we know that because Lindsay called 911 and asked the dispatcher to send the police out to the house, stating that there was a domestic dispute and that she needed assistance. The 911 call, in my opinion, was kind of bizarre. She was on the phone with the dispatcher for about seven minutes. The dispatcher asked her, like, does he have a weapon? She said yes in the car. She sounded very calm. The dispatcher wanted to know, okay, what is he doing? She was like, I don't know, he's walking around the house. It just didn't sound like an emergency, but you never know with domestic situations. I mean, it can go from calm to all the way left in a split second. When the deputies arrived on scene, they ended up making contact with Lindsay and they were wanting to know like, okay, what happened? Why are y'all arguing? What's going on? And this is when Lindsay told the officer that they were supposed to leave for a family trip to the Bahamas within one hour. Like they were supposed to be on a plane within an hour and, and heading to the Bahamas. We have filed for divorce. Okay. Living in the same house. It's hell on earth as you can imagine. Okay. Um, but anyway, woke up this morning. We have travel plans to leave mm -hmm. and he's insisting that I don't go. Okay. And then I have my keys. He start, moves me out of the way, starts trying to unload my car. Tells me he owns the car. He owns the rights to it. Just okay. got super aggressive. And that's when I called immediately because he's been physical before and I'm just not. Okay. Not so, doing that. So are you just wanting to leave? Or is he supposed to be going with you? Yeah, we're supposed to be going with our kids. Okay. All right. Um... So I don't know what, I, that's what I was asking dispatch, like what y'all can do if there's even, but of course now he's inside acting. I mean, I don't know what it is that you want us to do. I mean, if y'all have filed for divorce and y'all are going on a vacation, other than telling him he needs to calm down, I don't personally recommend you go on a vacation if together, if, if there's an issue like that and y'all have filed for divorce. Right. I mean, it's obviously a hostile situation. Right. The officers seemed kind of confused. Okay, y'all are getting ready to go on a trip. She said, yes. She said, my husband does not want me to get on our plane to go down to the Bahamas. When they ended up making contact with Robert, this is when Robert said, listen, Lindsay has had plans to go and see her boyfriend in the Florida Keys for three weeks now. Okay, so, so what's going on this morning? So for the last three weeks, longer she's had her couple's trip planned with her boyfriend to go to Key West okay but I, she just said you're going I, that was to Key West they don't. I'm taking my kids my three boys to the Bahamas this morning. our kids our kids yesterday she sent a message saying that she's going to change her plans and now get on the airplane with me and the kids to go to the Bahamas uh, and too, when by we the way. land she's going to go her boyfriend elsewhere and me and the kids are going to her house and i told her i'm not supporting that and you're not getting on the airplane that can mess with the kids heads and it's just something we're not going to do well mm -hmm. i'm 50 percent of the airplane she on paper owns 25 of that and majority owner the or owner the, or the other 50 percent owner and myself are both in agreement to not have her on the airplane so 75 percent says so it's kind of like, wait a minute, she's still living in the house with him that she said she felt unsafe with him with, right? Ever since April, okay? She's supposed to go on a trip, allegedly, according to the body cam footage from the police, she's supposed to go on a trip to the Keys to meet her boyfriend. Her boyfriend can't get to the Keys for some reason. He's down in the Bahamas. 
So now she tells her husband, I'm just going to hitch a ride with you and the boys down there. And the husband's like, I don't think so. You're not about to ride with me down there. And the husband actually told the police, I don't want it to confuse the kids, which whether that was the reason or not, I mean, I guess I kind of don't blame him. Like, I'm not about to, I'm already doing all this. I'm not about to drop you. Like, so it was, it was an argument about that. From what we know, Robert ended up taking him and his kids down to the Bahamas and she ended up having to just get a flight and fly on a regular plane like us regular folk down to the Bahamas, which she really should have done anyways. So now this is the evening of July 16th. This is when things went from bad to worse. Lindsay ends up getting arrested in the Bahamas for conspiracy to commit murder. The Bohemian police allege that Lindsay conspired a plan along with her 28 year old boyfriend named Terrence Adrian Bethel and his 29 year old friend, Farron Newbold. Now, allegedly there were text messages that the Bohemian police uncovered while investigating a break-in. So let me just bring you back here. On July 16th, the local police in the Bahamas uncovered what they said was Lindsay's plan to end her husband's life while they were investigating a break-in at a bar on the island of Guana called Grabber's Bar and Grill. Now Terrence, who again is Lindsay's lover, the boyfriend she was going down there to see, worked at this bar and grill. And he's actually pretty well known down there. I mean, I've seen different things online where People, again, who go to these places and these spots of the Bahamas that have lots of money, they know Terrence, who goes by Adrian to most of the people down there. They know him. I mean, he's a fun-loving guy. He makes drinks for everybody. He's very popular. He's very popular with the locals. I heard he's very popular with the local ladies when they come into town, married or not. I don't know. That's a rumor, but it's a big one out there. And he's very well known. So when this bar randomly gets broken into, into the safe and money stole out of it, allegedly the Bohemian police started to investigate and they just knew that it had to be an inside job. So what they did was they started investigating the employees and Terrence was one of the employees. So they ended up allegedly confiscating his cell phone. And this is when they found WhatsApp text messages between him, Lindsay, and his buddy, Farron, where they were discussing ending Robert's life. The three of them were arrested on July 21st and were seen being transported through the airport on their way to be taken to Nassau to be put in jail. There appeared to be only a small number of officers and the two men were sharing a pair of handcuffs and Lindsay didn't have any cuffs on or prison clothes. <laughs> Now, the text messages that Lindsay allegedly sent to these two have not been released yet. The only thing that's been released is that there was a text message, again, allegedly, that she sent with a picture of her husband, Robert, and she sent it to them and said, kill him. Now, when they called her in to question her, it is said that she admitted, yeah, I sent this, but it wasn't a big deal. I wasn't serious. I wasn't actually going to have somebody kill him. I was just, you know, I was mad at him. I was frustrated that day because she allegedly sent that text message on July 16th. This is what we know as of now, it could change later the day that they were fighting and the police was called. So she was saying, listen, I wasn't serious. I was just mad at him. Most of the American news sources have been putting out that from there, this is when the police down there, the Bahamas contacted Robert and Robert was, you know, nervous. He took his boys and he flew back to the States. And again, the three of them were arrested. Now get this. The two guys had a $20,000 bond and they were let out. Lindsay couldn't get out because her bond was $100,000. Now y'all remember that because I'm going to bring y'all back to this. And not only that, she had a $100,000 bond and her husband really with all the money just flew back to the States. So... Yeah. So she had a hundred thousand dollar bond and she had nowhere to be released to no home address because the only home that she had ever really had there that was hers was her husband's family's home and it wasn't her home. So she's ended up staying in like what they say is one of the worst prisons, not their jail. They ended up transporting her, her to the prison 
for 19 days. All three of them, Lindsay and her two co-conspirators are all claiming this is all being blown out of proportion. The media is blowing it up. You know, we would never do this, da, 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 da. And the two that ended up getting released on bond, they have ankle monitors on, they have to check in. And then it came out that Lindsay's parents were able to fly down there and rent her a place show proof of a lease and she ended up being released recently but her stipulations down there she cannot leave the country she's down there in the bahamas okay she's got an ankle monitor on where from 8 p.m to 5 p.m she has to be at her home she can leave during the day but in the evenings she has to be at home she cannot contact her ex-husband she cannot contact her children without permission and her parents are basically handling everything for her now I should also mention that the only reason why the three of them were let out on bond or able to be let out on bond is allegedly because they asked Robert and Robert said it was okay, the ex-husband. On August 7th, news broke that Terrence, Lindsay's boyfriend, said that he does not believe these charges are gonna stick. Again, this is blown way out of proportion. Basically, this is ridiculous and it's not gonna stick. And then the other guy is like, I don't, this isn't going to happen now over here in america every headline is wife plots to her husband and all of that stuff and that may be true now i'm getting ready to show y'all we're going to talk about some other things here in a second the first thing i want to say is in my opinion okay i've never filed for a divorce but i'm just saying you know in life by the time somebody files for a divorce and the two of them filed for divorce so much stuff has already happened okay that's not when the problems start typically people are going through things for so long before they finally file for a divorce. Now we know they were in a fight for money. I have no idea who the bad guys are in this situation. And I say bad guys because it could be everybody has got issues in this, including the husband as well as the other three. I don't know, I don't know these people. But what I will say is that this hit man that she allegedly hired through text messages that the only thing that we know of right now is she sent a picture and said kill him and i don't know if it said i could kill him or he makes me so mad i want to or what it was which i don't think any of those text messages are okay by the way none of them i don't care how mad i am at my husband or any or anybody i wouldn't I, I don't talk like that though that's just me you know whatever but this hitman you guys should probably know a little bit about him he is allegedly the son of a very prominent family down there he's an engineer he's got a, a wonderful job he makes good money he's an aspiring artist he lives in a smart home okay a smart home i don't got one y'all got a smart home down in the bahamas i mean he ain't hurting he drives a very nice mercedes car dresses really nice his girlfriend is online they are traveling around together i don't know but it doesn't really seem like he would be a hitman or have even a reason to be so just gonna let y'all know that again i don't know him something else that people are really talking about online and i can't blame them because it is a little weird is part of the arrest report that was obtained from abc news here in america from the bahamas so they got their arrest report from the bahamas and they posted a little piece of it in a couple of their like news videos and let me just pop it up here and read it to you the spellings off but i want you guys to see the way that they described things the way that they say it happened in their arrest report so they say on Friday 21st, July 2023, complainant Robert Shiver reported to the police that he reported that he spoke with detectives who told him that they have learned of what was a plot to murder him, solicited by his wife, Lindsay, and the male known to him as Adrian. As a result, he became in fear for his life and the life of his children and requested police action in this matter. So already from there, this arrest report says that Robert came to them and said that a detective told him and asked the police to get involved. But stay with me here. The second paragraph says, 
The defendants were later arrested where they were brought to the Marsh Harbor Police Station where detectives executed a search warrant for electronic devices on them where a number of WhatsApp messages were extracted from the phones suggesting a plot to kill the complainant. Now, according to this, this says Robert went to the police station, said a detective come to him first, okay? He told them he was in fear for his life and his children's life. The police go out, bring them in. Then they get their phones, look and find the messages in the WhatsApp. They question them and they go, yeah, we sent those messages, but it wasn't serious. And they arrest them. So I don't know, maybe it's a language barrier. Maybe the police report is wrong because, you know, not everything, you know, goes the same way the judicial system as it does here in America, but that's weird. So with that being said, there are rumors going around online. And again, I don't know. I don't know these people. I do hope that it comes out. There are rumors where people believe that it is possible. You remember in the beginning when I told y'all that Robert hired a private investigator to follow her, that it could have been that he had her phone tapped and that he's seen the text messages between them and that he went down there because listen, again, I don't know if this is true at all. I'm just presenting other theories that are out there that are interesting. She went down there and she got arrested down there. Okay. They're in this big battle, this divorce battle over a lot of money. Well, guess what? Now she's down there. She can't come back to the U S He's got the kids up here. He's got the house. I don't know what that's going to mean legally for him. I don't know if that means he's going to be able to dissolve the marriage and not have to worry about any alimony or anything because she's down there. I don't know how that works, but it's interesting. All I'm saying is this case don't make sense. And there's some weird stuff going on. I should also add that the Daily Mail released an article on August 17th of this year, 2023, saying that exclusive photos Lindsay Scheiber allegedly sent to that accused hitman, Farron Newbold, to off her husband Robert in the Bahamas are revealed for the first time. Now, allegedly, according to the Daily Mail, the photos that she sent this hitman are these photos right here. They're photos of Robert hugging another woman in the Bahamas at a bar after their argument that was caught on body cam footage. And you see, here's the other photo here with the other woman laying with her head on his shoulder. Now, I don't know, but when you hire somebody to off your husband, it seems like you would get a much clearer picture of their face. And I'm not trying to take up for Lindsay by no means. I think this is obviously a toxic marriage. And I don't know what all's going on in it, but I do think that this is weird for these to be the photos that were allegedly sent when she said the two words, kill him. I also know that down there in the Bahamas, they obviously do things differently than here in America, but we just did the case of the DiPolito case, right? And everything that the police went through to make sure she was trying to hire a hitman for her husband, okay? They got her on tape. They wanted to make sure money was exchanged. They wanted to make sure there was a plan for everything. They got her admitting it. She said she was 5,000% sure. If y'all haven't watched that video, go and watch that video. And this is seemingly a text message. I don't know. It seems weird. Seems weird. I don't know. Maybe she was plotting it. Maybe she was, you know, evil and he got away and he's safe now with the boys but we don't know. It just seems so weird. This is what I'm wondering if it's gonna happen. I'm wondering if he's gonna be over here and he's gonna just dissolve the marriage and tell her, listen, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i drop these charges over here if you just sign here. Sign away everything. I'm not paying you alimony. You're not getting the house. You're gonna walk away a free woman. You, you know, you can have rights. You can visit your son on these days. And, you know, because remember, he's the one that had to tell the police down there in the Bahamas that he didn't mind if they got out on a uh, bond, allegedly. I wonder if that's how it's going to go. Also, there was another clip that was released and I will leave um, the links to Plunder's channel who actually is the one that I believe pulled all of these clips um, down in the description box. If you guys want to listen to the whole 911 call and you want to watch the whole body cam footage, it'll be down in the description box. But there's this clip here where Robert actually asks 
the female officer if she knows another officer. And people think that's strange, almost like, does he have connections? Watch this. But then also to go back on the other point of view, because see, I'm, I'm trying to look at everything that's been going on here. When you look at Lindsay and listen to what she was saying in the beginning of the video, and when you look at her side of the documents for filing for a divorce, she filed for the divorce again on April 6th, claiming that she needed a restraining order because she was scared of him and that he, you know, was doing all this stuff, this DV stuff in front of the kids, but yet she's still living with him in July. And not only is she living with him, but her husband openly knows she has a boyfriend because she wants to hitch a ride to go down there to see him. And I don't know. I mean, I don't want to call her a liar because I have no idea what went on in the house. They would, they might've been just both at each other. Right. But I just find it, was he that scary where you could live with him, be filing for divorce, going after funds, also discussing your plans with your boyfriend and trying to ride on the plane with him. And why would you want to ride on a plane with him if he is this, aggressive person. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. There's just a lot of like weird stuff for the pieces of the puzzle. They, they just, they just don't fit together. We're going to see y'all. Let me know what y'all think down below. This is an interesting one. It's very interesting. Let me know what y'all think. Other than that, I love you guys and thanks for watching and I will see y'all in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.